This tutorial will walk you through the process by which to use an existing M query to generate a data flow within Power BI that can create a table of data which you can reshare within your organization. The nice thing about using data flows is that you can run the query once, and then once it's in Power BI, anybody can reuse the results of that query. So you're reducing the load that's on your source systems, and you're also ensuring that everybody's referencing a single source of truth when they pull a table of data into their reports. You can use any M query for this process, but for this example, I'm going to be using an M query from my Power Pop Health uh, repository in GitHub. Uh, this is a framework by which to ingest healthcare open data and uh, reference tables that could be applied to other industries too uh, into Azure and Power BI. I'll go ahead and navigate to the geography data folder and within this folder, you'll see that there's three files. There's the ARM template, which is used to pull the public data into Azure and drop it in a data lake. And then I have two other uh, items in here, which are both M queries, the FIPS states and the FIPS states and counties. Now the FIPS states and counties actually references the FIPS states data flow. So you have to deploy both of them in this instance. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the FIPS states data flow. I'll go ahead and copy the M code, go back to Power BI, and you'll see I'm in my Power Pop Health workspace within Power BI. Notice that with this workspace, I'm using premium per user. Uh, this is important uh, with this particular M script. If you don't have premium, uh, you can run uh, these two M scripts within Power Query, within Power BI Desktop, and it'll work just fine. If you want to deploy it as a data flow, because there's two different queries where one references the other, it does need to be in a premium workspace. I'll go ahead and go to new data flow and we'll define new tables. And this is a blank query. Now, all I'll do is control all control V. And now I've pasted my M script into the data flow. I'll go ahead and change the generic your data lake to the name of my data lake, which is Power Pop Health. The name of the data lake does not have to match the container. Uh, I just happen to do it that way. Change it here. Change it here. and change it down here. Then we can go ahead and hit next. It's notifying us that there's been a few modifications in the script patterns. Hit accept. You may be asked to configure your connection. I'll go ahead and use my organizational account. Hit connect. And then we get a preview of what that uh, query is going to look like. And we'll name this one FIPS states. And as you can see, we have the two digit FIPS code for each state, along with the state name, and then a unique key, which can be used as an integer value for the FIPS states code. Now let's go back to the Power Pop Health repository. Go get the M code for FIPS states and counties. Again, we'll copy this code, move back to data flows, get data, blank query. And it's important to note, this is where the premium capacity becomes mandatory for data flows. In order to have two different queries in the same data flow that reference each other, it does need to be a premium workspace. Again, change the name of the data lake. Hit next, accept, and then we'll get a preview of that query. I should note also that when we merged the queries, so you can see here that we merged FIP states uh, into this new query, 
it's referencing the name FIP states. So you'll want to name that first query FIP states, uh, or you can go change the M code if you want to give it a, a different name. We'll name this one FIP states and counties. And let's check the preview to make sure everything looks good. And you can see we now have the FIPS counties value uh, along with the county name, the state value along with the state name, and then the integer key for the state and an integer key for the county. So you can see this table has been consolidated into an optimized dimension that can be used within a business intelligence model. We basically collapsed the state table into the county table so that all of those values are available in one place, which is going to give you the most optimal table for queries that run on joins between this dimension and fact tables. Now we can go ahead and save and close. Let's name this data flow. And I think I prefer using the ampersand. Hit save. And now it gives us the option to refresh the new data flow. Let's go ahead and do it. If you need to schedule the data flow to refresh on a cadence, you can do that also. For this particular example, you'd also probably want to have uh, the data factory package refreshing on a cadence uh, in order to bring in any changes to the source data uh, before you refresh the data flow. Let's hit close. And we've just taken a source, which is coming from the web that was ported into an Azure data lake and formatted it so that it's optimized for business intelligence. So now let's go take a look at that using Power BI Desktop. And here's where the real value of data flows comes in. If I'm in Power BI Desktop and I wanna get data from data flows, I can navigate to my workspace, scroll down to FIP states and counties, and then I have both of those tables of data available to use. So within the workspace that houses the data flows, I could give view access to the whole organization or just people who work with uh, mapping data, um, whoever I want, and then I can reshare those data flows uh, with as many people as, as might need to use them. Um, so effectively, you're only querying that data lake once when you pull it into data flows, and then you can scale out to as many people as needed. Because there's no PII or sensitive information in reference tables like this, uh, from my perspective, it's a best practice to make it available to everyone who might ever need to use it uh, so that you reduce data duplication and give them access to a single source of truth. If you were creating a report that's just looking at FIP state codes, you could use this table. But if county level data is available, as in some of the other uh, data sets within the Power Pop Health framework uh, that I've created, you can go ahead and then pull that table into Power BI and then pull one of the key values to make a relationship to the fact table and everything is cleaned up, optimized and ready to go. And then you can go ahead and load the data into Power BI. One other quick note is a best practice. You'll probably want to set the, set the summarization to do not summarize. And you'll notice the little epsilon disappears. And then for values that are geographical, you can actually set the data category. So in this case, it's state or province. And then you'll see a little globe next to that column name. And if I were to pull that column onto a map, you'll then see that it maps to each individual state. The exact same process could be used to pull those M scripts into Power Query if you don't have premium or if you just like to use it in a one-off report where it's going to be in an individual uh, Power BI dataset. Again, if you'd like to recreate this example, you can go to the Power Pop Health framework, uh, which is publicly available for anybody to use.